Good evening and thank you for fighting past the nausea at my full body appearance here and welcome to another edition of the Lowdown Extraordinaire itself, the Hollywood Lowdown. As you may or may not know, or either way, not really care, just watching this to kill time between those awesome nostalgia PSA we have in the news, which is pretty cool. The Lowdown has the fever, Oscar fever. <laughs> they made me say that, you can tell by the sets here, huh? Or actually, it could be a real fever. I've been feeling pretty warm and have been sweating more than usual. But anyway, last time we gave out the nominations for Best Actor, so now, because I am very predictable, it's time to celebrate the top five actresses who I feel have gotten ditched at the prom. Not by the high school quarterback, but by the Oscars. So, without further ado, and remember, being nominated doesn't count, here is the list of Best Actress winners. All right, seriously, no drum roll this time. We talked about this the last time. Anything, I'm just gonna keep doing this and you can come on. What? Get it? I do, yeah. Let's, you, you can go now. Okay. Go. Adrian Barbeau. She's always been one of my favorites and does have herself a very strong following, especially in her horror genre. But I always felt that as an actress, she had quite a range and you can easily see that if you watch the following films. In John Carpenter's The Fog, she played Stevie Wayne, a strong leading lady taking on a dangerous mist with killer ghost pirates. In Escape from New York, again for John Carpenter, she played a hooker named Maggie who was both beautiful and badass and one of the few women to pull off a fro that would rival Pam Greer. Of course, who could forget her as the lovable but strong-willed daughter of B. Arthur on the TV series Maud, or if you like your Barbo more sassy with a side order of hamming it up, check out her performance as Billy, an extremely annoying wife to Hal Holbrook in George Romero's Creep Show, and with a sexy, sultry voice like hers, or mine, not hard to see why she was perfectly cast as Catwoman in the 1990s spectacular Batman the Animated Series cartoon. Naomi Watts, a beautiful and very talented actress from the land of kangaroos and dingoes who stole my heart after seeing her in, of all things, Tank Girl as steampunk tech extraordinaire Jet. She was also a very compelling protagonist in the drama The Painted Veil as Kitty Fane. She steamed up the scene as Betty in the erotic thriller from David Lynch, Mulholland Drive, and has even graced us in some wonderful horror movies like The Ring and Funny Games. Most recently, she's returned to the world of David Lynch as a character in the new Twin Peaks reboot. And yeah, she was also in King Kong, but so was Jack Black, so let's not go down that road. Alfrey Woodward. Another actress with incredible range, Alfrey has had a chance to shine in many genres. Some of her standout performances include Lily, a colonist who takes part in an adventure with Captain Picard against the Borg on the hit movie Star Trek First Contact. She gives a powerful and moving performance as Mistress Shaw in 12 Years a Slave and shows off her comedic side in hit movies like Scrooged, where she plays Grace, the poor secretary who has to endure Bill Murray's antics, and Audrey Williams, where she has to endure family in What's Cooking. Jennifer Jason Lee. Another all-time favorite of mine, Lee has had a variety of really excellent performances that seem to have gained only marginal success, but deserves so much more. In The Hitcher, she played Nash, a diner worker soon caught up in a cat and mouse game with Rucker Hauer and C. Thomas Howell. She was very powerful and moving as Kathy Bates' troubled daughter, Selena St. George in Dolores Claiborne, and also lent her more Surreal and abstract style of acting shine in David Cronenberg's video game sci-fi thriller Extasens as video game guru Allegra Morgana. Her more notable roles include playing a psychotic roommate named Hendra Carlson in Single White Female, though she does kill a cat and tries to kill Bridget Fonda, so I suppose she's not all bad. And more recently, she gained not an Oscar, but the Academy's attention in her role as the silent, for the most part, but intriguing Daisy in Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. CCH Pounder, and no, not just because of her awesome name, though in truth that does help, but seriously, she's always been a favorite of mine and has gained a cult following notably for her work in horror and thriller movies. Her presence has always been one of command and strength, the kind of actress who can walk into a room and automatically take charge of any and all situations. Some of my favorite roles with her include the one-armed motel owner who kicks a lot of demon ass in Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight, 
She's also memorable as a brave and tenacious radio disc jockey named Fran Ambrose, who tries to save Norman Bates from himself and the voice of his mother in Psycho 4 The Beginning. Other roles include a gruff lieutenant named Marge Francis, holding her own against Arnold Schwarzenegger, no easy feat, in the movie End of Days. And she also lends her voice to many DC animated movies, playing the unflappable Amanda Waller, the only woman who can teach Batman a thing or two about ruling people with fear and strategic tactics. And who better to voice a character like that than C to the C to the H. And there you have it, the winners of my own personal little award show playing in my head along with circus music and visions of bearded pigs line dancing. If you haven't seen some of the movies mentioned here, may I suggest you stop binge watching a Netflix original for a couple of days and check out some of these movies and performances. And if you haven't seen any of the films mentioned, you live under a rock and may as well trade in your shirt buttons and join the Amish now. Tune in next week as we conclude our Oscar theme with my choice for overall absolute, without a doubt, underappreciated best film. For the Hollywood Lowdown, this is Mark McCrina saying nobody cares what you're eating, so stop posting about it.